Hey everyone, this is Clutch Phase, and welcome to Stormworks. So this is a new game on the channel, although if you're if you've looked up my profile on Steam, you probably know that I have played this before. I've got a few builds in it. I generally I just play this to relax a little bit. I figured it might be fun to kind of show it off on the channel a little bit though, so basically what Stormworks is, is it's a building game, right? Uh, its original title was Stormworks Build and Rescue. Basically it's a game where you build boats or planes or helicopters and you go out into the world and you perform missions basically. You see people who are in help, who need, in need of help and you help them. Or what most people tend to do in Stormworks instead is just build giant vehicles getting bigger and bigger. I believe this, the average size of vehicles now is bigger than the size of the workbench. Anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and start a new game here, and I'm going to do it in custom, in the creative base, because I, I was thinking about this for a little while, so I'm, I've decided what I want to do with this, is I want to kind of just show off what I've built for now, and if you guys like this video, if you want to see more Stormworks content, let me know in the comments or by liking the video. Hey, there you go, I'm actually promoting that with uh, my words for once, as I'm having to edit it in. And yeah, basically, if you guys like this video or this game, just let me know and uh, I can continue it. Also let me know how you'd want me to continue this because there are a few options there. So I could do like building series or I could start like a career game and just play from there, start building vehicles and actually doing the missions, playing the game the way it was intended. I'm gonna go right ahead and say it. I'm not very good at this, but the same goes for Minecraft and well that's a lot that's on my channel quite often so uh yeah if you guys want to see more of this please let me know and I will make more of it yeah so let's go ahead and get into it I'm going to load in and I will bring you guys back in as soon as the world loads all right and here we are so as you can see I've got a few things attributed to my character if I actually just take these off you can see what my character looks like so this is what my guy looks like my default guy got binoculars got a torch an electric torch right there so let's go ahead and spawn in So anyway, I said I wanted to kind of do this as just kind of a showcase of my videos, so let of oh, my videos. It's just kind of a showcase of my creations. So let's jump over here, and uh, I guess there's no better place really to start than with the first vehicle that I created. So I'll go ahead and get that out, and I'll be back with you in a sec. All right, and we're back, and there she is down there. And this is actually oh, and as you can see, I did override weather and time of day just because it always spawns us in the middle of a storm for some reason, and it's not very nice. So there we go, that's fixed. So yeah, that's the first thing that I created in this. Obviously not like, I. this isn't what she looked like when I first created her. She, there were there are some differences. So let's go ahead and climb aboard and I think you'll very quickly see my strengths and weaknesses in building in this. So climbing aboard, I am very happy with this design. What inspired this build was actually built by another YouTuber called Frantic. At the time he was doing a rogue modes game and I was too, that's actually why I built this. So clearly things have changed. Yeah, at the time he was doing a rogue mode game, and he built a little catamaran, but it wasn't quite a catamaran. What I did like about it though was that like, well, it had kind of this pokey outy bit. So as you can kind of tell with Amity here, she's not really a true catamaran. There's kind of like a half hull here, but at the same time the two hulls are almost entirely separate. And in fact, if we actually climb inside, so this is what the inside looks like, and you can see lots of passenger seating, and these two rooms are actually new. I didn't have these when I first built this little boat. Yeah, I don't really have anything in them yet. Looking at changing that. Entirely too many seats. Uh, I don't believe there are any missions that would require you to carry this many people, but that's fine. And then in here, we've got the controls. And as you can see, everything's buttons and levers and whatnot. We've got a horn. Does that work? It does work. But yeah, anyway, onto what I was saying earlier. If we come downstairs, you can see the two hulls are actually completely separate from each other. They are entirely different entities. They are built separately from each other. And if we climb in here, you can see, so this is still an electric door, which I haven't changed yet. I have changed most of the others to the new doors. But yeah, this one's still an electric door. And you can see I've got two engines powering each. I think it's two engines per propeller, which is kind of ludicrous. And as you can probably tell, like I didn't really know how Stormworks worked at the time. And if I'm being honest, I still kind of don't. Like It's kind of bizarre way to go about it. If we come in here you can see, I'm pretty sure that's a bug because as you can see there's actually no openings where the water should be able to get through. It's exactly the same as on the other side. But yeah, if we open that door then the things start to flood. <laughs> it's not great. Uh, I got a little bedside table here. This is just where the bed is because I kind of intended to just kind of live on this boat in Robo. In fact, I kind of did for a little while, but it just doesn't last because you need to get fuel. Anyway, coming back upstairs, let's go ahead and go ahead and take her for a spin and I'll show you how she drives and then let's go and look at the next one. So start the engines. Pretty simple. Engine start, engine throttle up, engine clutch up, and we're going. As you can see, lots and lots of smoke because I'm pretty sure I've got two, or it might even be three exhaust ports on the top of the funnel, on the top of each funnel. She drives quite well. Her maneuverability isn't the best, but it's not bad either. 
yeah, overall, just a pretty fun build. As I said, this is not obviously not what she looked like at first. Things did change, but I don't have the older version. I believe I can still download it off the Steam Workshop, but I didn't put her on the Workshop right away, so... Anyway, let's go ahead and sail back into the dock and grab the next vehicle, so I will be back with you then. Alright, and here we are with the next vehicle I've made, and... As you can probably tell, the frame rate has dropped significantly <laughs> because I went a little bit insane with this one. I learned my lesson very quickly because, as you can see, I'm running much slower than I was before. This, like... I find this frame rate tolerable, I know a lot of people won't. But yeah, if we run through here, I've got a very basic layout laid out. As you can tell, I went very ambitious, considering this is the... I, I'm pretty sure this is the second vehicle I ever tried to make in Stormworks. Of course, I didn't try to make this in Rogue Mode. This was entirely in uh, creative mode, in custom. And uh, yeah, we got a little view out onto the forecastle. I'm pretty sure there's... Oh, there is a way to access the forecastle. I wasn't sure if I'd done that. I One thing you'll learn about me is I'm not very good at connecting my builds together. Like, what's this? What's this little room here for? And of course, this little, this whole section here, this section, and this section. We can't even get into these because I didn't put doors on them. And then there's just... Well, obviously I didn't actually build the hull in on this, which actually ended up being a mistake and something that I learned from later on. If we walk up to the docking bridge here, you can see I didn't really put paint blocks up here because I think by this point I was starting to learn my lesson. That, or I hadn't bothered to clone them yet, which is probably actually closer to the truth. Uh, anyway, so yeah, that, that happened. And if we come through here... Oh, I do have electricity in here. And you can see I've got a little stairwell, and this is... I'll give you three guesses what the inspiration for this ship was, and the first two don't count. Only for the internal layout. Obviously the exterior doesn't really look anything like the ship that I clearly based a lot of this on, but you kind of get where I was going with it. And this is actually a goal that I had for a little while, to get a little ocean liner that actually fit in the workbench here. It's something that I wanted to do for a long time. And yeah, here you go, you can see here almost as well. Uh, I did paint her in Cunard colors, but just kind of disregard the coloring of her. Do you probably will get a good idea for what the inspiration for this was. I did put pivots here, which is interesting. It must it means that at some point I probably actually intended to make those cranes work. I mean, hell, this cargo hatch is actually a door, so probably intended to make that work at some point. Anyway, coming back up to this deck, I guess we'll call it a deck, because if you hadn't guessed by now, the inspiration for this was, at least for the layout, was obviously primarily Titanic, but Titanic had a lot of similarities with other ships, so using her as an inspiration for the internal layout probably wasn't actually the worst idea, and that's actually something that's kind of continued, although also changed, so as you can see, I've got a very large dome over the staircase here, and you can see I was very obviously like, this is literally just the pattern that Titanic had on the grand staircase, <laughs> so yeah, again, pretty clear the design that I was going for here. If we go up again onto the boat deck, I'm pretty sure I didn't actually detail anything up there, but I'm not 100% certain. As I said, there's not much that you can actually do on this one, the ship obviously doesn't actually work. Coming up here, so yeah, we've got the funnels sitting on the deck, which, hmm, do you know what, I actually kind of like that if you could get around them. The stairways being here kind of presents a problem with that, but that's okay. And you can see here's the dome that goes into the grand staircase, and that's down there. Uh, the funnels are actually, I believe, the biggest funnels that I've ever made in Stormworks, and and the ropes are also not helping the performance. Uh, I, I will actually admit I'm getting higher performance than I thought I would be with this one. I did include a way onto the bridge, that's interesting. We've got a bridge wing here. Not a great bridge wing, but it's not a bad view. And probably the most basic bridge design I have. <laughs> Alright, so uh, that's about it for this one. I will go ahead and see, I'm not sure if I put anything blocking the top of the funnels. I did not. Nor did I paint the inside of the funnels, so there you go, that's that. Oh, you can see I did actually plan out the uptake casings though. So this is entirely closed off and would go down to the boiler rooms of the ship, which obviously aren't actually in. I did build that all the way down. Uh, it was... this one is on the workshop. It was uploaded ages ago. I don't actually remember when. So uh, if you do want to have a look at this one, feel free to. I'm probably never going to complete this. Someone did ask about that on the Steamwork page, and I kind of made out I had intentions to. I no longer do, and I will show you why in a few moments here. But for right now, yeah, that's that. And you can also see like this structure. Like I say I primarily drew inspiration from Titanic, which for the inside, that's true. For the eight for the exterior, I almost drew inspiration from a couple different lines, including the French line and Cunard line. Uh, the French line up at the bow and the funnels, the very stout funnels, but the funnels are also very clearly Cunard colors. And this docking bridge structure is also very Cunarder. So anyway, um, I'm pretty sure that's about it for what is on this ship. So let's move on to the next build, and I will be back with you when I have that. Alright, here we go, number three, and this is actually going to be the last boat for a little while. There are a couple more boats coming, but this is... 
After this, I kind of moved on to aircraft, and I'm not going to press any of these buttons because they all launch flares, although I do kind of want to show you that I did something that I thought would be particularly annoying. If you press this button, it launches that flare, and if you press this button, it launches that flare. So they're all completely random, and I also use toggle buttons, not push buttons. Basically, I, I gave up on making this pretty fairly quickly. Uh, as you can see, it's really not the prettiest build. And I kind of wish I hadn't done that now because now the brightness is just incredibly... It's very red, for one, and it's just also very kind of annoying. But anyway, uh, if we go inside, it's not going to fix the brightness any. But if we go inside, I'll show you kind of what I did in here. So I should I should clarify right off the bat, this was done as a, one of the challenges from that from said YouTuber from Frantic. So this is... Um, this hull design was something that he built. Um, I dropped it down another few blocks at the aft end, but... The entire bow, I did not build this. I did none of this. I just painted it, which clearly, as you can tell, not one of my specialties. <laughs> uh, I added the anchors as well, and uh, if we go inside, the bridge structure wasn't there, so that's something that I absolutely did to ruin the ship. <laughs> And if we come in here, you can see uh, the bridge. I honestly don't think the bridge looks awful. Ah, yes, I put this in uh, to kind of show how to do it. So you've got the engine throttles, so turn them both up. Then engine starter, which is right here. And then you can clutch in, which I annoyingly put the wrong way around. So as you can see, not super fast, but it works for the purpose. I did the same paint block trick, but because this is such a small boat, it really didn't matter. I also made a change here. I used azimuth thrusters instead of regular propellers because I was kind of under the impression that they turned, that they kind of had a built-in pivot, which of course they don't, not in Stormworks, so those didn't work as well as I'd hoped, but that's alright. And as you can see, another very smoky build with all that smoke pouring out of the funnel up top. So yeah, that's, um, that's that build. The flares, anchors, lots of that. And I'll go ahead and stop here so I can actually show you the rest of the build as well. Perfect. And then we've got gear so you can switch into reverse and then you've got navigation lights those are up here and yeah you can see you got green on the left and red on the right which is wrong so i clearly did not have that <laughs> nailed down red should be on the left and green should be on the right uh anyway what what is this that actually does nothing and an epurb uh so that's an emergency position indicating rescue beacon um which is that but it doesn't work, so that's fine. Uh, we also have bridge equipment, which is just all the cameras, and as you can see, the freight weight goes all the way down. Anyway, so uh, there is a little bit more to show you, not a whole lot. If we come in here, we've got a little corridor into a stairwell. I believe one of these controls the lights. This is toggle button, and this is... Oh, there you go, that's lights. Uh, I'm gonna mostly be running through these with the lights off, just because lights are very lag-inducing in Stormworks. So, this is private quarters, if on, do not disturb, and I'll actually show you how I did that. So if you press this button here, you can lock the door and you can see these lights come on. And this is just a, um, instead of a paintable sign, I used a paintable indicator here, which you can assign two different values to. Which I actually used on one of the later builds, and I'll show you how that worked. This was going to originally be a suite. As you can see, inter interior design is something that I'm really not very good at. This actually hasn't changed all that much. It's changed slightly, like I've gotten a little bit better, but I'm, I'm still not very good at it. If we go up here, you can see this just leads out onto the forecastle deck. You might have seen this earlier. And the anchors do in fact work. You can, uh, I used push buttons for this, which is actually even more annoying. But yeah, if I now come down here, you can see the, this anchor has lowered a little bit and is now in the water. So yeah, uh, that's pretty much oh dear all right now that that siren has died down um i probably cut that out of the video if i didn't then i apologize to all of your ears because um they shouldn't have to go through that <laughs> anyway <laughs> um so yeah coming back from the bedroom if we come through here you can see this says crew only i tried to write it on the sign as best i could and it didn't really work so uh it should say crew only and this is just a crew access corridor, which I did do something with. As you can see, coming through here, we've got a little room with a few windows and a bed. So, you can sleep in the bed. I haven't actually tested this, so let's see if that works. It actually does, more or less, so that that's alright. Then coming back here, if you come even farther back, we've got another identical corridor on the other side of the ship. And coming in here, we've got the engine room. So... We've got lights, as you can see, all well and good, and color-coded pipes, which is something that I used to very frequently, and lately I've almost given up on just because I just find it almost not worth it to do it. 
I'm not saying, by the way, that you shouldn't do it. If you can be bothered to, you absolutely should, because it makes it a lot easier to see what things are doing. This, for example, is coolant, and the gray is exhaust, and the red, I'm pretty sure, is fuel, and then the blue is air, and then the red is power. Oh, so this isn't red, this must be... Oh, it's brown. All right, so brown is fuel. Anyway, uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, and you can see I've got three medium generators and a small generator. Small generators only in because I couldn't fit another medium. So this ship, in theory, should never run out of power as long as it's got fuel. And there's a little cupboard under the stairs, which, eh, you know. <laughs> so anyway, if we we have to stand up this door to open it because otherwise we cannot get around it. So anyway, if we go upstairs now, uh, I, and I might as well actually at this point just go ahead and return this to the workbench, and I will bring the next vehicle out, which as I already stated, is not a boat. So yeah, let's do that. And here we are with this build. So. As you can see, this is a plane, and I have, very appropriately, I believe, named it Large Biplane. Uh, as you can see, I was having some heating issues, hence radiators everywhere, which, by the way, did not work. I'll try to fly this thing so I can show you. Um, basically, I honestly feel like planes are something that I've gotten a lot better at since I started this. As you can see, this plane is not pretty, and I really designed it only to work. I wanted a biplane, I wanted something, I did want something that looked good, but towards the end of it I could not be bothered to try to make it look good, so I just didn't. Uh, if we go ahead and start the engines, we need the coolant pumps, and I don't know what this toggle button does, but let's go ahead and press it. That might be late lights later on. I uh, will go ahead and turn the throttle up, start the engines. There we go. And we can accelerate, and can we take off? Ooh. Alright, we actually can, just about. Let's go ahead and turn that off. So you can see, it flies fairly well, and if the heating issues have been fixed, then that's wonderful, but I expect they probably haven't. So let's see, altitude, engine coolant, fuel, and speed. Ah, my speedometer isn't working. Neither is my altimeter. That's wonderful. Alright, it does seem like the engine issues have actually been fixed, so that's good. I did not realize that, but... That actually means that this works quite well. Anyway, um, I can't land this. I, I am not a good enough pilot for that, not in this game where I'm flying with WASD. So I'm just going to go ahead and do my best to just do this. There we go. I've really shown you everything there is to see in this one now. I, I guess I'll just show you it in the workbench. So this is the fuel tank, which is probably actually part of the issue. Also, I'm not sure why I put windows on the fuel tank. There are a few decisions that I've made over the course of this that just aren't going to make sense to probably anyone, but... And, um... So in here we've got eight seats, which is a far more reasonable number than... Oh, I'm sorry, no, we've got ten seats, so I take back what I said. <laughs> uh, anyway, so that's that's that plane, and, um, I did edit this one, actually, so I will be back with that one in, a, in just a sec. All right, and here we are with what I have called four-engine biplane. As you can see, we called it Divinity, we put a little logo on it, a little lightning strike through the propeller. I actually still like that. I think that looks quite cool, and I'd forgotten that I did that. Uh, we've got it registered as November 2601 Victor, and we've got a little flag. Obviously an American flag because the November registry is an American registry. And there we go. Close the door, and I believe this is lights. Yep, and we've got piping, which we can walk under as long as we're sprinting. Um, very awkwardly placed window. <laughs> and we've got some blinkers, which I believe means that I put lights on it. So let's go ahead and... I wasn't sprinting, there we go. So we'll close the door, and as you can see, I did paint actually quite a bit of it, and I'll be honest, while this is a messy interior, I don't think it's a terrible interior, but I also think it's an interior that's kind of difficult to mess up. And as you can see, because I was having heating issues at the time, though I'm clearly not anymore, uh, but because I was at the time, I actually moved the engines from being outside the plane to instead being inside the aircraft, and um, if I go ahead and clip inside, you can see I put it in the fuel tank, which is... Probably not the best place for an engine to be, but I, it was the only solution I could find that actually worked for the heating issues at the time. Which, seeing as it's not blowing up anymore, I realized was probably a bug, but just better not to risk it, I think. Oh, that's the parking brake, okay. Anyway, um, oh, I've actually got lights on this, so I'll go ahead and turn on my navigation lights and my landing lights and my beacon and my strobes. All of which, obviously, biplanes probably wouldn't actually have. <laughs> but, you know. So we'll go ahead and turn on the coolant pumps, which, yes, I, I had coolant pumps on a lot of my airplanes. And we'll go ahead and push the collective back down, because I don't think that's necessary. We'll go ahead and start the engine. There we go. And throttle up. There we go. And we should be able to take off pretty easily. Yep. 
and it flies fairly nicely. In fact, it actually... this flies a lot nicer than I remember. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off my landing lights because they're just entirely too bright, and yeah, there we go. So, I actually really like the paintwork on this one, and... oh! And I think I just stalled it. I definitely just stalled it. Or are we out of fuel? We're definitely not out of fuel. So, let's see if we can start the engine again. We might not be able to start the engine again. We are! <laughs> Alright, so that's that. So, <laughs> uh, that seems like as good a time as any to move on. Oh, I got lucky I didn't chop myself up in the propellers there. Uh, yeah, so anyway, let's go ahead and move on to the next build, and we'll continue from there. Okay, and the next build is a much, much larger plane, as you can see. Much larger plane. Um, I would like to know, did I actually fix this? I did not. So, uh, I, this I should have done with a button, but at the time I did not know how to do that. And does this one actually work? Oh, it looks like it does. It does indeed. So there you go, so that one works, and we've got... A cargo door on either side, which is... depends on the plane, but I believe most of them don't, so <laughs> that's an issue. I'll go ahead and close those up. This plane does fly fairly well from what I recall. Um, as you can see, interior, definitely not one of my strong suits. I've got heaters kind of acting as emergency lights back here. And I tried to do emergency exits. Don't really work. Um, I couldn't figure out how to make them work, so yeah. Uh, up in the front here, we've got a lot of equipment strapped to the doors. Let's go ahead and actually close them so you can see. We've got a fire extinguisher, we've got a first aid kit, oxygen mask, torch, and flare. And we've got a parachute up here as well. And we also have a no smoking sign and a seatbelt sign. And you can see we've got the seatbelt illuminated over the no thing, and the no things illuminated over the cigarette. So, yeah, that was what I was mentioning earlier with the, um, with the paintable indicators. And... I do have an autopilot listed here. I'm pretty sure I never actually got this to work. I'll see if I did though. So uh, this is this looks like it's mostly just lights. Uh, we will turn the parking brake on because it's jet, and let's see what we can do. So turn the throttle up slightly. Go ahead and start engine one and two, and we'll run the fuel as well. All right, both jets are running. So go ahead and turn off the starters. Throttle all the way up. Parking brake off, and here we go. We are rolling, and we're up. All right, I'm actually going to turn the sound down a little bit, just because jets are loud. And I believe the landing gear should work. Yes, it does. Uh, the landing gear is a bit um, off, just because the way I had to do it was I had to... Um... Oh goodness, this plane does not fly very well, does it? Uh, here, so if I can actually go ahead and put in the altitude hold. How high up are we? All right, so I'll go ahead and put a thousand into the altitude hold. There we go. And we will set that. The plane should try to hold itself there. Yep, seems like it's trying to. And we'll go ahead and level the rollout. And if we select a destination, I might actually have a very primitive autopilot figured out. I'll just go ahead and set this as our target. And we'll see if the plane does a 180. So we'll go ahead and do this. Set the waypoint. Submit that. And turn on the autopilot. And yes, it looks like the plane that is actually adjusting its yaw. And it is, in theory, turning around, although it doesn't seem to be turning very well. Oh no, tell a lie, it's turning alright, based on what that island is doing down there. So, yeah, that's kind of about it. I'm going to go ahead and pull the throttle back, because it's, um, it's very, very fast, as you saw. And yeah, we've got, uh, we've got lights, we've got all the, all the usual stuff. We've got navigation, beacons, strobes, taxi light, landing light, cockpit lights, which we can actually go ahead and turn on. Just a nice... Uh, I find brown works very well for lights, because it's just a nice calm, like, creamish color. And uh, yeah, so that's really about it for this plane. I'll go ahead and show you one thing that I enjoyed doing while I was trying to work out some of the bugs with it. Uh, if you open the door, take a parachute just in case, and then take a... oops, where did I put it? Ah, there we go. Some rope. Attach it onto the rope anchor there, and you can just jump out of the plane <laughs> and bungee jump from the, from the, from the door. Quite fun! Oh yeah, you can see some pumps there, the fuel pumps. Um, that's why it's a two-step process to turn on the engines. And you can see this plane, unlike the other one, is actually registered to the UK. I believe it's got a Foxtrot registry? I can't quite tell. Yes, it does. Foxtrot. I can't read that because we're bouncing too much. Uh, but anyway, yeah, so this is uh, good fun. I'm pretty sure it's not actually possible to get back into the airplane once you've done this. 
So the only solution is... Oh my goodness, we are six kilometers away. So the only real solution is to do this, and this, and this. But of course, falling from the sky is quite boring, so what we're actually going to do is we're going to click here and do that. And that takes us right back to the workbench. So, um, anyway, moving on, what I want to do now is actually... Uh, I spawned with a rope in, that's a shame. I wanted to get rid of the rope in this parachute that I was holding, but either way. So we'll go ahead and load the next one up, shall we? Oh, and I can show you in here, I had uh, the startings of an APU in. Uh, I never actually got around to finishing it. You can see it's got the exhaust port. It actually has an exhaust, which is something that I shouldn't have built into the APU, but it's fine. And uh, yeah, so that's that. And let me grab the next one. Okay, so this one was a bit of a weird one. I was trying to design a starfighter of sorts. Um, so like a Star Wars style spaceship. I'm actually super fond of it. I don't think it fits in with Star Wars, which is what I was trying to go for. So while I do think it looks really cool and the massive engines kind of add something to it, uh, I just don't feel like it really works necessarily. But we can go inside. Uh, I've got a special little mechanism for getting inside. The whole cockpit opens up and I had learned at this point how to do a switch box. So you can see we've actually got a proper little hinge here, rotates the canopy up, and we can jump in here and we can close that. There we go. And as you can see, for once, nothing is actually in front of us. We do have a HUD, which I believe doesn't actually work. And uh, yeah, so to start this one, we have to use the up and down arrow keys and we've got to press one to start the engines. There we go. And if we hold, S, I think? Yes. Alright, and if we hold S, we should get off the ground. It really wants to roll to one side, and we kind of crash and die. So yeah, that was an issue that I had with it as well, is it just kind of doesn't work. Uh, we do have some lights. We've got the beacon, we've got the strobes, we've got navigation lights, I believe all of which are now broken. Oh, the beacons are. The beacons are working. We do also have landing lights, which are broken. And we have interior lights, which that one is not broken, although it seems like the circuit for it is because I can't turn it off. So anyway, yeah, that's that. Kind of a much more random one that time, but I don't know, I could like it. I still think it looks cool, even if I could never get it to work. Someone did tell me that my issue is that I just have too many batteries in the engines, which admittedly I probably do. <laughs> that is a lot of batteries. I believe it's, yep, it's 12 per engine, 12 medium batteries, which is a hell of a lot of weight. So yeah, but anyway, so moving on, um, I do like this build, but let's go ahead and move on to the next one. Okay, so this is a bit of a random one, actually. Um, the devs had just added steam power into the game, which was something that I was very excited to play with, and I decided for some reason to start with a train. Uh, you can kind of see the shape of a steam locomotive in here, it's really just the basics. I've got a boiler, I don't even have a recondenser on this, so I've got the boiler, the piston, the steam exhaust, the simple exhaust, steam whistle, and the funnel. That's really about it. We've got a firebox inside, and if we stoke it, which I believe... Oh, it doesn't even need to be stoked, so which button is it to actually start it? Is it this one? Let's go ahead and have a look. Yes, it is. So you can see that going up now, and once it hits 100, the boiler should start gaining pressure. All right, there we go, and now you can see the pressure is starting to build up. Still don't have a whole lot of pressure, but that's all right. We actually don't want a whole lot of pressure, because if the pressure gets too high, I believe if it hits 10, then the boiler explodes. So we do have brakes here. We also have throttle. If we turn the throttle up, nothing actually happens because the train is on dry land, which, yeah, trains and stormworks only work on train tracks. But you can see it does start running. We've got a hell of a lot of steam exhaust going on, and that's just because, well, the boiler is actually going to explode here in a minute or two. As you can see, very, very basic and doesn't actually work, but it was fun to build and it was fun to play with. And, oh goodness, that's a rogue wave. Well, that's, that's something, isn't it? <laughs> Wasn't expecting that. So yeah, goodness. I guess that's why you keep the alarm systems on. Anyway, yeah, as you can see, the steam's run out and now it's just sitting here. All right, anyway, yeah, let's go ahead and move on to the next one. So this was a fun build and I actually have something more playing with steam to show you in a little bit that comes after the next build. And this is it, this is the next build. So this is my first time for a few things, actually. This is my first time building a helicopter. As you can tell, not a super pretty one, but I actually don't mind how it looks. I actually think it looks kind of cool. It's also my first time playing with weapons. So as you can see, I've got this little bomb here that killed me. So uh, yeah, take note, kids. Don't play with bombs or you'll probably die. But that's okay. In Stormworks, we can just reset the vehicle and there we go. Everything's fine. And as you can see, I've got rockets here as well. And we've got a missile on the side. And yeah, it, it's pretty much armed to the teeth, this tiny little helicopter. We've got little machine guns here as well, as well as a couple on the top. And uh, yeah, so I 
I'm sure you all probably want me to go ahead and take this thing for a test drive and maybe shoot some things, so let's see what we can do. We'll go ahead and turn things on. We want the gyro, and we want... We'll go ahead and turn on the navigation lights for this one because they don't actually do too much. Go ahead and turn up the throttle, start the engine, wait for this to hit 5, turn off that, and now we should be able to go ahead and hold up. There we go. Go ahead and fly outside. Here we go. And we are clear. So now we can go up. And uh, I'm not actually going to fire anything at anything in particular, but I will go ahead and show you. So we don't have anything to actually drop the bombs with a button. So you have to just hit that little button on the side of you. You got to go into first person to do that. There you go. And I'll go ahead and show you the missiles as well. So if you hit three, no, I'm sorry, three and four are the for the rocket launchers. If you hit five, you can fire the left missile, and if you hit six, you can fire the right missile. I would guess they're trying to lock onto something far away. I don't know why else they would have gone down. They don't usually go down. But then again, I have been learning some things about Stormworks. I don't know why there's so much exhaust coming out of this helicopter either. I actually have several catalytic converters in it, so there should not be that much exhaust pouring out of it. But either way, uh, you kind of get the gist. And also, if you hold space, yeah, the machine guns are actually powerful enough to push the helicopter backwards. However, they do only have 50 rounds, which is fine because we've got more ammunition up in the top. We also have a welding torch, binoculars, a spare torch, a couple of additional uh, first aid kits, fire extinguisher, and a parachute back here. And uh, this equipment actually brings me on to the next build, which is this little rescue helicopter. So, full disclosure, this actually came after some of the other builds that I did, but I thought it was appropriate to put it in here because it is the exact same helicopter that I was just in, just converted for, well, rescue ops. So as you can see, clearly not big enough to have any additional seats on the inside, but we do have several padded seats down here, and uh, we've adjusted all of the wartime equipment for first aid kits, and I believe on the floor there is a defibrillator. Yes, there is. We kept the welding torch, of course, because if something should happen to the helicopter, we obviously want to be able to repair it and get it out of there. And we kept the fire extinguisher as well. I can't get out. There we go. Uh, otherwise, all the controls are exactly the same. We've got same buttons and everything. You can actually see here, I didn't turn these on in the in the wartime one. Little stealth lights, you can see that up there, and if I turn it off, you can see it just goes dark. So obviously that was done with paintable signs. That was actually quite fun to try to design, and we've got couple up there as well. Heaters as well. So yeah, this is adjusted for search and rescue, and I obviously painted it so it looks the part. And sort of see here, I got the red cross on the side, and it's an orange and white, so it really stands out in the sky. Did I do a good job painting it? I kind of don't think so. I think I could have done a lot better, but eh, I, I don't mind it. It's... I do think there's a lot of orange on it, and I probably could have fixed that. But anyway, um, so from this one, let's move on to one of my favorite vehicles that I've designed, and that is this miniature F-18, which I'm still stoked with. I didn't, when I started it, I didn't actually intend for it to be miniature, and it's not on the workshop as miniature. I just failed to appreciate just how big these jets are in reality. Uh, as you can see, it's not, like, even this miniature one isn't small. Like, standing next to it, you can see... And if I actually go ahead and climb the ladders, get into the seat here, so I can show you a few things. We got the canopy here, obviously. Uh, this is a little indicator. First time playing with that, and I've forgotten where my wheel brakes are. So if I press one, that turns the brakes on, and you can see this little indicator comes on, telling me that the brakes are in fact on. And if I press it again, then it comes off, and you can see the plane starts rolling a little bit. Only very slightly, but you can tell we have moved from when we spawned in because it was dead center. Anyway, let's go ahead and turn those on so we can actually do some more stuff. So. We actually have a tail hook, and that's back here. Doesn't actually work, you can't actually use it for anything, but it's nice to have that in. Uh, we've also got flares, which are actually controlled by the back seats. I'm not really going to get into the back seats, so don't expect to see that. If you want to play with it, go ahead and jump into the... I it's on the workshop, so just jump in. Uh, I've got navigation lights, as you can see, one on each wing. I got them right this time, so red on the left green on the right, so we can go ahead and turn those off. We've got the beacon lights, which are lights that are used to symbolize when the engines are on. You can go ahead and turn those off. Identifiers, which are these little stealth running lights, little green bands that you see around the airplane. And those were done the exact same way I did them on the helicopter. Go ahead and turn those off. And we've got... Ah, this is the engine control, so let's go ahead and start the engines. There we go. Generator output is coming on. We could turn the afterburner on. I don't think there's a need for it. And what this is, is it's our thrust spoiler. So what we can do is we can actually throttle this all the way up. And even if we turn the wheel brakes on, you can see the plane is not going to move because essentially I've told the engines not to generate any thrust until I do that. And if we pull up, there we go, we can take off. And as you can kind of tell, the main gear doesn't actually work. But if I hit this button, we can pull the nose gear in. So that's nice, at least. Uh, the plane's kind of too small to have 
the main gear come up, which is a bit of a shame, and you can see this actually flies quite nicely. So we've got a beautiful little aircraft here. I believe this is the only time that I've done this because I don't really play with weapons all that often, but it was a novelty, so I wanted to play with it a little bit. Uh, we've got the gun, obviously, at the, at the nose, and we also have, if we... Actually, if we jump into here quick, I can show you. We can see how many rounds we have remaining in the machine gun. I thought that was kind of fun. As you can see, we are armed to the teeth with missiles. So let's go ahead, and if we press 2, we can fire a missile, and that just kind of goes off into the distance, and, well, who knows where, but it's, it's off. And we can press 2 multiple times to launch several missiles. I wonder if any of those will track each other. They probably will. <laughs> Doesn't look like it. Anyway, uh, so yeah, that that was fun. Um, what else do we have? Ah, we have a HUD in here. I nearly forgot about that. So we can see how fast we're going, our altitude, and we can see kind of our orientation, but that's better with the artificial horizon. And I think that's about it. I don't really think there's anything else to show you. So we can switch controls so you can give control to the back seat. Both of you have to press it, and obviously I am flying alone, so <laughs> that's really not going to happen. Uh, oh, I do want to show you this, actually. We've got a little air brake. Did my game just crash? Okay, so welcome back. My conclusion is that I'm pretty sure just firing all the missiles is what crashed me, because uh, I, I think I've mentioned this before, I, I play on a laptop, so <laughs> stuff like that happens. Anyway, let's go ahead and uh, jump into the next vehicle. I am assuming the F-18 worked. I hope that it did. If it didn't, I'll find out when I edit the video, and I might um, record an another clip. Probably won't, but we'll see. Uh, anyway, yeah, let me go ahead and grab the next vehicle, and I will catch up with you. All right, and we are here with the first of two um, steam engine for boat tests that I was doing. This one didn't really amount to anything, but all I was really trying to do with this one is just figure out a layout. As you can see, I've got kind of the shape of a boat's hull here, and then I've got where the coal bunkers would be, where the fireboxes would be, where the boilers themselves would actually be, and then where the engines would be. So, I'm not sure why this is all so close to each other. In hindsight, I don't think I would want the boilers this close to the turbines. But yeah, this was a first test kind of draft thing. As you can see, no piping, no no wiring, no actual electronic circuits, nothing going on here really. Just a very basic test of layouts and how things looked. Probably also how big things were because I, did, I wasn't 100% sure. Yeah, so let's move on to the next one. Which is this? And as you can see, I have some genuine piping going on here. I believe I actually got this one to work, if I recall correctly. And there we go, you can see some spinach on the propeller. There you go. We'll move on to the boat that I was talking about before now. I'm going to spawn that one as a mission, so it's going to be over there, so I'll be back in a second. Okay, I know I said I would spawn it as a mission, but I realized that I actually have this incredibly early state of construction, and I thought it might be fun to actually show you guys around this to show you kind of the order that I worked on this one in, because I would actually argue that I kind of did this wrong. Uh, the question is, do I actually have a staircase in yet? I actually do. As you can see, very, very sparse and empty, and I was very much working on the superstructure at this point. How do I get to the bridge? You're probably going to notice here me trying to follow paths and routes that, I, that the current build has that just aren't in on this one yet. You can see I actually had the workings of, so I had a bit of a hull in and I was starting to try to work out how I wanted the stern to go, how I wanted the bow to go. It also worked out how much of the hull I wanted to actually be straight. Yeah, I, I think it, it didn't work great, but it kind of worked. You can see I, I followed very similar layout, but I did put the boiler sideways, which is interesting. Let me go ahead and spawn in the mission now. So obviously the ship fits into this little port here, but it's just a bit too heavy. Uh, my computer really doesn't like it. So I'm going to go ahead and return this one to the workbench. All right, and here we go. And you can see this is the little ship that I kind of designed. So I'm, I'm in no clip mode right now, so I can just kind of fly around her. And you can kind of see what elements I kept and what I changed. And you can see I added a couple more lifeboats as well. Let's go ahead and start from back here like we did before. So let's go ahead and press home. So we go here and we should be able to walk in here. And you can see the frame rate is suffering a little bit. It's actually not terrible. If we come up these stairs, you can see we can walk out here and we've got this little gate here and we can get on the helm. The rudder is in fact hooked up and we can do that. But even better than that, I think, crouch jump over this little gate here and down these stairs. And now we're in the bowels of the ship. We can go ahead and press the buttons to actually light the boilers. All right, and we are back. So if we grab the helm here, we can go ahead and throttle up. All right, there we go. The propeller starts to spin and we should start seeing some motion out of this little ship. And there you go. She's actually starting to move now. Obviously, this is a very, very small ship. Oh, yes, and I gave her a name. I don't think I mentioned that. 
I went ahead and called her Lavinia, uh, which is a character in Roman mythology, if I recall correctly. She is moving ahead quite nicely. This actually isn't the final update on this little boat, though, so I'm going to go ahead and grab the most recent build of her, and I will update you with that. All right, and as you can see, this one is actually a little bit different. So I decided to actually lean into the Cunard paint scheme that I had on her funnels, and uh, I gave her a little white stripe at the base, I gave her a black hull, but yeah, I didn't really change much besides the paintwork. Oh, and I would like to point out all of these lifeboats do work, which is something that I could actually change for performance reasons, I just haven't. If we can come out here into this little walking area out here, we've got a little area. We could overlook the folks, so we'd be able to come up here to tie lines to these, let them spin, or to go ahead and moor the ship using these, which are supposed to kind of represent bollards. This is a crew only area where we've got a lot, and I mean a lot, of equipment, including first aid kits, flare guns, compasses, pistols. You can actually use the catwalks to walk around the engines. Um, I originally actually built this catwalk in so that I could check the engines, see what they were doing because I was having issues with them as I alluded to earlier. Uh, I decided because I had to build a catwalk in anyway, I thought it might be fun to just keep it. So anyway, yeah, I think that's about it for the Lavinia. So let's go ahead and grab uh, the next build, which is actually not a ship, so I'm going to go ahead and fly back to shore. Alright, and we move on to the second larger jet of this video, where this time I used a switch box to open the door, yay! <laughs> and we do have to use the handle to get inside, it. and you can close the door from inside. For this one, we've actually got a bit of an interior, so we've got a table here where you could play cards or gamble or really do whatever you want. Some seating, of course, for presumably guests or something. We have a proper lavvy in here, so if we walk in, we've got the uh, mirror. We've got the seatbelt and no smoking signs. We've got those at the front end at the back. And, of course, in the middle of the plane, we've got the bedroom. Coming up to the cockpit, we've got a fairly detailed cockpit this time. We've got a proper overhead panel. We've got some stuff in the floor, and we've got these screens, which don't yet work. Let's go ahead and actually start this airplane up. Go all of the fuel pumps right here, which is the top middle instrument panel. Uh, we don't actually need any of the generators. We will turn the battery on, even though that's not really necessary right now. Wing inspection lights we don't really need. We don't really need any of the lights, but I will turn on the beacons and the nav lights, just for fun, basically. We'll turn on the seatbelt sign and the no smoking sign. We'll go ahead and throttle up to about half, and all the fuel pumps are on, so we're good to go. Go ahead and turn on engine two. There we go, and start engine one, and we'll go ahead and throttle all the way up, turn off the parking brake, and let's go. Okay, so pull up, then leaves the ground, and with this one, I actually got some landing gear in that I'm actually quite happy with. So you can see, if we pull it up from in here, we get two yellow bars indicating that the gear is moving, and then we should get, there we go, three little red lights indicating that each of the gear is up and locked, and as you can see, they're all properly stowed, and we should be able to drop them back down. There we go. Both moving, and they should both lock into place just fine. There we go. We'll go ahead and show you the retraction sequence, just because I think it looks quite cool. There you go. Anyway, yeah, I like the paint job of this plane. I kind of like how it functions. I love the fact that the landing gear works properly. And looking at it now, I do think the nose is too sharp. But other than that, I actually really like the look of this plane as well. I will be back with you once we're back over there. All right, and there is one last vehicle, which I would like to show you. So here's the first instance of the newest ocean liner that I'm building. And as you can see, I kind of went in a similar yet slightly different direction. Oh my goodness. Sorry about that. As you can see, I just went through a tsunami, so that was fun. So I'm going to go ahead and grab... You can kind of see now the similarities to the Lavinia, but also several of the differences. So one thing that I decided with this ship was, unlike with the Lavinia, I wanted to make this one actually look pretty good. And in order to accomplish that, I actually decided not to use any of the bigger wedges. So this is all one by one wedges, as you can see, one by one wedges and pyramids. And I actually genuinely think that they make the ship look better than she would have done had I tried to be more creative with it. You can kind of see if, as we fly around here, she's got that ocean liner feel to her prow, which is something that I really, really enjoy. We've got the larger windows are now double portholes instead, and most of them have actually been changed into simply portholes, which I just felt fit the ship better, especially when they're that low down on the hull. And uh, yeah, we've got a few more of them. So let's go ahead and climb aboard and I will show you what's going on. So we'll start up here on the top deck. We'll actually start with the bridge, which hasn't changed. I painted the inside, I think. This actually might not have changed. If we come back here, you can see we've got some access around the funnel. And I would like to point out right away, this ship is not actually as complete as the Lavinia is. So while a lot of the things that I did later on on Lavinia are already on on this, the engines and piping and everything is not actually properly set up. So the funnels are just for decoration right now. Coming in here, uh, this is just general sitting room, just open space, just talk amongst yourselves, you know, that kind of thing. Coming through here, you can see we've got the staircase, started decorating the walls. Don't know if I like it. Probably gonna change. Uh, I was trying to go for that kind of um, Parisian feel, almost feeling like uh, the Café Parisienne on the Olympic class. Don't know if I accomplished it. 
I did change the stairway here because I wanted it to feel a little bit more grand. I just wasn't super fond of what I had on the first iteration. So now we've got this little ordeal where you've got a little half landing and then stairs continue down to there. And this is what became of the dining room area. So you can see it's actually a little bit wider than it used to be so that I could put a double wall in so we've got windows now. Not actual windows because I wanted to be able to get behind the dining room on this deck without actually opening the back of it. Partially because uh, this is the uptake casing for the funnel. I haven't actually done anything back here yet. I intend to. And if we come back here, we've got this is a brand new staircase, actually, one that I didn't show you earlier because it wasn't actually on the ship yet. This is another staircase for the lower class because essentially the, what I was thinking is that this portion of the ship would almost be reserved for this class, for the lower class. So uh, as you can see, this stairway actually only goes down one deck because if we go up here, this leads into, well, you can see they get a nice skylight in this one, and it leads up to this little area here, which is the same area where we had the opening into the ship. As you can see, we've got some pipes, some supports. Uh, you can walk around here. The stairway is actually a bit of a problem, and I might have to move it in a block because you actually can't walk around it, as you can see. I don't think I can even squeeze through. No, can't. That's going to have to change, obviously. But yeah, so this is the same little area that I was showing you earlier. You can obviously just walk around this side of the ship and come up the stairs this way. Valid option. And as you can see, we have a helm back here now. I don't remember if I actually did the logic for this or not, but you can see we have the rudder. I haven't done the logic for it yet. We've got two propellers on this one. So as you can see, We've got a properly shaped stern on this one, so she looks a lot cleaner, I think, than the Lavinia did, even with all of the little kind of jetty out bits and how it's not quite as smooth. It just looks a lot cleaner because it looks like a properly curved stern, basically. And yep, two propellers, as I mentioned earlier, so we've got one on this side, one on this side, and we've got the new propellers as well, so they're the variable pitch propellers, mostly just because I think the blades look better. I don't actually think I want the blades to be able to change pitch, I just think that the propellers look a lot cleaner, a lot smoother than the other ones, so yep, that's why I did that, and I, I realize there's more interior to show you, so let's actually run forward. Oh yes, these lifeboats, these will work, they don't yet. Fully intend to make each and every one of these work, you can actually, they're not actually connected to the ship in any way besides well, obviously besides the rope, but you can push them off the deck if you so choose. As you can see, it absolutely moves. You can see how the ropes are a bit of an angle now. Anyway, let's go ahead and head inside, and I've got some stuff to show you here. So, doors here. I didn't want to have doors inside the ship, but I wanted to keep this as an opening. So, I had to put doors inside or just not let the ship float, and not letting the ship float was the worse option, in my opinion. But I was kind of just working on designing at this point, so a lot of what you'll see laid out doesn't actually, may not actually transition into the final build, but I wanted to have something in place. We've got stairs up at the front as well, and I think I did start laying out the engine and boiler rooms. And then they've got a ladder down into their workstation, which is the boiler rooms, as you can see. Same style boilers that I had on the Lavinia. I think they will literally function the exact same. As you can see, we've got the engine rooms here, and if we come back, we've got some smaller engines, actually, some smaller triple expansion reciprocating engines this time. And these are just going to be generators for the ship, as you can already see. So, what now? I might actually... Let's go ahead and head forward again. As you can see, it feels very claustrophobic down here, as it should. I'd like to point that out. <laughs> it should feel claustrophobic because, well, it's a boiler room. It shouldn't feel like... You shouldn't have all the space in the world. Anyway, uh, I think that's actually about it. Oh, this section right here, I closed this off in, with the intention for it to be a four-peak tank. I think that's actually causing some buoyancy issues because, as you probably noticed while I was flying around the ship earlier, the prow kind of dips down, which is a problem. So I think I'm going to go ahead and call that a video. I think that's the end of that one. Thank you so much for watching. If you did like it, please go ahead and comment down below if you would like it. And if you enjoyed my content, if you generally enjoyed the video, please consider leaving a like and subscribing. If you have already subscribed, you're one of my favorites. I love you. Thank you so much. And uh, yeah, that's going to do it. So I will see you in the next one, and goodbye!